Hi, welcome back to the third edition of the series Understanding LIBOR Transition. So we, before we go into new concepts of RFR, let's do a quick recap. So we have seen how LIBOR was computed. We saw that LIBOR was based on rate quotations given by various banks for their interbank transactions. So there was actually no underlying transactions themselves. Hence, it was easily manipulated and we had several scandals and fiascos related to LIBOR rate and that's why uh, the people and authority thought that it's time for a change and they introduced the concept of RFR. So we have risk-free rate for all the main five currencies. Uh, starting from the USD, we have uh, SAFR for GBP, we have Sonia and so on. And we looked at the various comparisons between RFR and LIBOR and understood that LIBOR is a forward-looking rate and RFR was a backward-looking rate. And obviously because of this, it gave to practical issues in the implementation of RFR. So let's do a quick recap and see what are the practical uh, difficulties in implementing RFR. So let's talk about the plain base case which actually led all the, to all these uh, problems in implementation. We always know that the rate of the first, the rate of first is uh, coming on the previous day's rate. So when I have to apply for the rate of second, it comes only on the third morning. Similarly, the rate of third, I will get on fourth morning and so on. So to get the final interest amount on Feb 28th, I will come to know only on March 1st. So it gives a lot of liquidity problems to both the borrower and the lender. The borrower only finds out on 1st March how much he has to pay for the FEB installment because the, the final rate of the last date, he negates it only the next day. So there are several ways in this uh, problem was mitigated. Let's have a look at each of these cases. So the first is the concept of payment delay. So in this concept, we know that uh, on the 1st of Feb, I'm going to get the rate for Jan 31st. So as part of this approach, what happens is that there is a grace days given of five days, for example, and only on Feb 5th, the borrower has to pay. So he gets enough time to understand what the Jan schedule payment looks like. So this is one of the approach which can be mutually agreed by the borrower and the lender. The other concept is the concept of lockout. In this, the RFR is no longer updated for a certain number of days prior to the end of the interest period. So the interest period ends on Jan 31st. So the RFRs are applied every day with one day in areas and then probably let's say five days before, say on Jan 26th, you stop it. You no longer apply the RFR rate as it comes from the Fed. In fact, an averaged RFR can be calculated a couple of days before the end of the interest period. So basically, you have frozen the RFR four or five days before the payment. And hence, the payment amount on Jan 31st becomes predictable. The borrower and the lender are aware what the Jan installment looks like four or five days before the interest period. Is the concept of last reset. In this option, the interest payments are determined on the basis of the RF, average RFR of the previous period. That means if I have to calculate the interest for the FEB period, I will use the average RFR of the previous period, which is JAM. So this is known as the concept of last reset. Of course, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very dicey here because assuming that a, a, an important geopolitical uh, situation uh, changes the rate uh, I, to the extreme, either an extreme low or an extreme high, 
uh, the, the borrower and lender have cannot take recourse of that because they have tied in to a rate of the previous period. So that gave uh, rise to another similar kind of approach of last recent. So this is very similar that a single RFR or an average RFR for a shorter number of days are applied for the entire interest period. So for example, if I'm going to calculate the interest period for this, I'm going to calculate based on the RFR of a shorter previous period, not the complete previous period, but a shorter period in the past. A uh, popular of the approaches which have a lot of buy-in between borrowers and renters are the concept of look back. So in this concept of look back, it's pretty simple. So if I have to calculate the interest of first, I take the interest which was published by the Fed maybe five days back. So if the look back days is five days, I will take five days back, which is in this case 26 Jan. So for the 2nd of Feb, I will take the rate of 27. Similarly, for 3rd, I will take 28. So what it means is that when I am on Feb, the Feb 28th rate, I will be aware of it on 23rd itself. So on 23rd itself, I would know what my interest period uh, payment, interest payment for the Feb period would look like. Because on 23rd itself, I would know the rate as of 28th. So by 23rd, the entire rate for the all the days of February is made available. So this is a very um, um, good concept which has a lot of buy-in and has uh, uh, and, and probably would be the most uh, adopted. The look back days obviously can be mutually agreed on. It, five is probably a very good number. It could be three, it could be even two. So this concept of look back is probably the most uh, uh, favored approach of RFR. So this is about uh, SOFR. Similar kind of approaches can be used for other RFR currencies as well. So thanks uh, for watching this video and uh, we would go to more complicated terms. Uh, we understand why compounding is required in RFR unlike a LIBOR rate and we will understand the concept of observation shifts. Thank you.